Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to turn your blower style uh, hot uh, pizza warmer of a graphics card and that's about the only thing this card is good for and uh, turn it into a nice ice cold uh, thing for under 30 bucks. So um, we're going to be using a CPU tower. Um, I've got a case fan because the fan on here is too thick in order to, uh, to work and fit in the case so we're trying to make it fit in the case. Um, for this, I'd recommend just getting like a normal uh, glue. This is the one that used to be on my old computer before I upgraded to an AIO. And um, I'd recommend for this one just get something that's thin that you could probably put a couple of zip ties on, etc. Uh, you're also going to need some thermal paste. That's kind of important. Some screwdrivers to take apart and fix things as you'd like. Zip ties, because I've already tried this without it. And zip ties are pretty much the easiest way to do it. And some scissors to cut in case you make mistakes, which they happen. So, one of the biggest things we gotta test first is how hot does my pizza warmer get before it, uh, before we get into modding it and seeing how well it works with the different coolers. So let's get some tests, shall we? So I've got it sitting down in the system down here. Here's the uh, graphics card that was in there from the $75 gaming PC, which I test everything on because I'm not putting it on my very expensive computer. But let's test it. So this is OCCT, or oh, that was three Cs, there's only two. You know, a couple C's is okay. I mean, you can have a couple C's, like, thick. That, that's good to have a couple C's in there. It's good. So, point being, this is the uh, nice little testing thing. We're going to test the GPU. We're right at max settings, and we're going to run it at 1080p, and we're going to check temperatures as we run. So, let's see, shall we? Let's get some temperatures. So, we're looking at a solid uh, 30 FPS, which my graphics card gets, like, Let's see if I can get it cranking up there a little bit. I'll just put that to the, down there real quick. It might actually get a little bit higher. Yeah, I need to have it. Probably should have that thing loaded right there. And, and um, what are we looking at temperature-wise? Let's see. So GPU is staying. Let's see what GPU temps are in about five minutes. So looking here, we've kind of flatlined at 82 degrees. So that's our baseline. Actually, before I changed out the thermal paste. It was it's probably around 82, 83, but it's pretty much flatlined at um, around there. And so the big thing is, before I changed out the thermal paste, it was hitting around 84 really quickly. So um, this is good, I guess, to see a baseline of what it is. So now let's take it apart, get what we're looking for, and add the cooler on and see what we get from there. So now that everything is cleaned off, you're ready to get started with prepping your heatsink. So first off, the thing about this one is the fan is too big on it. So we're going to be taking this fan off in order to get access to the majority of the rest of things. And here it is. So basically, I'm just going to take this uh, CPU fan off. I'm going to actually use a different screw set. And I'm going to go through here and just take this off and put this so you guys can see this a little bit better probably move the card out a bit and you just want to kind of pop these off your cooler probably might not be like this it just depends some coolers are some coolers aren't you just gotta pop it off slide one side off and you're stuck with the tower that you're looking for to cool it um keep in mind though you don't really need to keep that fan because you're if you're going to be using um and it's not big enough you're going to be using a case fan if your fan does fit and it fits within the case fine keep in mind though that the you'll be sitting like this and so you'll probably have your fan here actually it's probably the other way and you put your fan here so that way this card will be sitting upside down like that in your case well in my other way it'd be like sitting upside down in your case like that so this will be this won't work for sli and this will disable your chances of ever doing sli unless you want to put the, the cooler back on but keep in mind though that if you have a, any standard card it should fit fine and its clearance should not be an issue if you have a standard size case um so that will just sit upside down upside down also make sure you don't end up hitting the um other fan in there as well because that's important for keeping it cool but now let's lay the card down and get this going for what we need so first off that's what it's going to look like um, you want to set up your thing figure out where you kind of want it where it's going to be centered at, etc. Just make sure it's all in there where you want it. And then you gotta kinda point it out to make sure that everything will fit. So you've got this case fan. I'm using a case fan because the other cooler, um, A, doesn't have um, support for um, a four pin. Uh, it only has support for three pins. So that's actually why I'm using this as well. So basically, this one will actually look cooler because it's an LED blue fan. 
But pretty much, you go through there and this will plug into the motherboard. Meanwhile, the rest will not. And you'll basically just be all good to go. So now let's figure out what we want to do. So now we bring out these zip ties. These zip ties are going to be important because you've got to tie the cooler down um, pretty good, I guess. So this is just a slow, painful process of figuring out, A, don't put it on the wrong way. There we go. Well, that does look a little bit more, I don't know, ghetto than I thought it would, but it's good. So overall, I gotta say, it looks really cool. Like, I mean, if you were to take a look at it, and I mean, it looks awesome. Like you've got the cooler, I mean, I'm sure you could touch it up a little bit, use some black zip ties or something, but I mean, it looks really cool. Um, one of the things I would recommend though is, uh, I did have a little difficulty making sure that it's stuck. So um, sometimes you might have to put like, I don't know, a piece of Lego underneath here or something to hold this heat sink up if it doesn't bump on here. You've also got a little bit of a clearance issue if you have a really big um, fan. Um, so anything larger than a hunt, um, 200, or uh, I guess the large fan. Oof, there with my finger. And um, basically you can put that down there and just keep in mind that you got a little bit of space limitation every pass by hits. That's pretty much it. To give you guys an accurate demonstration of how well this made this card better, this card run, is running at 54 degrees Celsius right now. That is almost a, oh my gosh, that's at max load, running max load literally that at 54. So I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's jumping up to 55 or whatever, but it's literally much leveled off and it's pretty much sitting in there, cooled off and it's, yeah, working fine. I'm really impressed. So let's go over our results. We got 30 degree cooling, 30 degree Celsius cooling over the standard cooler that it came with, which by default is of course a blower style, which you can't really argue much there. But point being is I wanted to make this argument because I feel like a lot of people are sitting out there and they're going, hey, I've got spicy temperatures. I don't know if I want to, you know, figure out how to cool them down a bit. And that helps with GPU life, etc. Now, would I use this on my personal card? Uh, I probably wouldn't because I actually like the style of the 1080 Ti Founders Edition. But if I had maybe not as much of an appealing card, maybe something similar to this, I might actually consider it. Now, of course, you might not be able to do SLI. In some cases, um, you might have a bit of an issue with clearance. But I feel like overall, if you have the room and the space, I mean, it only cost me 30 bucks for everything to use the cooler, the um, fan and stuff. I mean, if you have an extra extender or adapter for the four pin, you could probably get that working too. So my point being is, if you're sitting there and you're going, well, I don't know if I want to do it. I mean, it's not for everybody, but I think it was a very cool thing to see that how, you know, what the kit card is capable of running at. Uh, meanwhile, you know, while you're doing this stuff. So, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I appreciate you watching this far, and if you liked those videos or these kind of videos I do, check out my channel for other of those tech-related uh, videos as well. But thank you all. Subscribe if you're interested, and I hope to see you guys around. Goodbye.